I'm Catherine Lang, Reserve Officer at MyPo Nature Reserve, mainly in charge of the research and monitoring section. I think when most people think of Hong Kong is a very busy city with a lot of tall buildings, a lot of people, a lot of traffic. But uh, a lot of people when they come to Maipo, they find it really surprising that a place like this exists in Hong Kong. I think I'm one of the very lucky person to have a job which matches my interests. So every day when I come to work, though sometimes work is stressful, but uh, when you listen to all the birds calling, looking at all the green around you, you appreciate your work and how you're contributing to the world ecosystem. So when I try to look at uh, what the birds are doing, I find it really enjoyable and very peaceful. Sometimes, of course, I would like to be a bird because they can simply just enjoy the environment and living for their day. WWF Hong Kong started managing Maipo in 1983 and now uh, we do all the habitat management and education work here. We have got 22 staff at Maipo, 12 of them are office staff which in charge of different sections and then we have also 10 field staff working in the field in charge of, of all the on the ground habitat management work. Many people will call Maipo as a bird paradise. Uh, in Maipo, you can find over 400 species of birds, which is already over 75% of all the bird species you can find in Hong Kong. So amongst these 400 species, mainly they are migratory water birds. Maipo is situated in the center of the East Asian Australasian Flyway, which extends in the north from Siberia, Alaska, and northern China. And then further south, it covers Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. So Maipo is one of their stop oversight and wintering sites. Along this flyway, many of the coastal wetlands have been destroyed already. So Maipo is one of the critical sites as a stop oversight for these migratory water birds during their journey. So one of the migratory water birds which is most popular among Hong Kong people might be the black-faced spoonbill, which in the world, the total population is just about 2,700. And in Hong Kong each year, you can find up to 400 black-faced spoonbill, which is almost 15% of the world population already. So Hong Kong is one of their most important wintering sites. Sometimes when I need to count the spoonbill and because when they're feeding they keep their heads down, try to search for food in the water, they kind of look like a flock of sheep. <laughs> At my pole, besides uh, doing bird counting to evaluate the effectiveness of our management, we'll also do some bird ringing. So what we do during bird ringing is we capture some birds using some special nets and then we'll mark each bird we caught with a metal ring. On this metal ring, there will be a unique coat. And then we'll measure the like, body length, body weight of these birds, record down all their body characteristics. Many of these birds are migratory, so conserving them only at my pole is not enough. We need to understand where they come from so that we can conserve other sites which they use as well. The welfare of the bird is always our first priority. I was lucky enough to meet one of the birds which I ring in Australia when I'm volunteering to join their bird ringing program. It is really amazing to hold it in my hand and feel the miracle of water bird migration. In Maipo Nature Reserve, you can find various habitats. Each of them support various types of wildlife, such as the freshwater pond. You can find a lot of dragonfly species. These dragonfly utilize the freshwater pond at Maipo so as to show off themselves to attract mates. Another habitat you can find at Maipo is reedbed. 
The size of the red bat Maipo is one of the largest remaining in the South China region and it's got very high ecological value. In the mangrove, you may find uh, fiddler crabs. Uh, in the male fiddler crab, there's a unique feature. They got a very big claw, which they used to fight with each other for a girlfriend. They are very important food for migratory water birds. And in the mangrove, you can also find other species such as the tiger moth. And uh, right next to the Maipo Nature Reserve, you can also find the mud flat, in which there are a lot of tiny creatures hidden in the mud. These are very important food for the migratory water birds. And then you can also find the walking fish, which is the muskipper. So the muskipper can not only walk on the mud, they can also breathe in the air. When they try to fight with each other, they will have their dorsal fin straightened so as to make them look larger than their enemy. Each year, we spend a lot of man days and resources to manage the vegetation next to the freshwater pond. So what we were thinking about is buffalo is actually part of the natural freshwater ecosystem. They are not only helping us to manage the habitat, they are also of high culture and education value because Hong Kong used to be an agricultural area. Besides doing the habitat management and research work at MIPO, we also do some tours and programs for the public. We've got 30,000 visitors coming to MIPO each year. Many of them are school children. Some of them may just come to experience the nature. For secondary school students, they might do some testing on the water quality or have a good look under the microscope to look at these tiny creatures inside the water. Uh, the public visit we organise at MIPO, some may be just general three hours tour, some are more in-depth such as uh, migratory bird watching and then in summertime where there are less birds around, we'll organise some tours at night such as the Gateway Shrimp Tour, which will bring the wise use of wetland concept to the public. In this tour, we try to demonstrate how people in the past used to harvest Gateway Shrimp. Though now the shrimps are not used for sale in the market, we are still showcasing to the public so that they can understand a sustainable way to use the natural resources and also it's a very important cultural heritage for Hong Kong because the gateway at Maipo is the only operating gateway remaining. WWF Hong Kong started the wetland management training program in 1991. So each year there are about 200 wetland managers being trained. So we try to establish a very good relationship as well as try to help them develop their own wetland management plan such as uh, we work with the Minjiang Estuarine Wetland Nature Reserve to try help them develop their own management plan. It's a hands-on program and what we do is hope to pass our experience and knowledge onto other Wetland Nature Reserve so that they can replicate the success of my poll at the site and this will provide another option for the migratory water birds along the East Asian Australasian Flyway. I think for a lot of uh, people, the concept about nature reserve is you just need to let it grow themselves. But uh, actually for Maipo Nature Reserve is a bit different because it's a wetland nature reserve. So what we do, we need to keep actively managing the site so that prevent it from turning from a wetland into a woodland. Otherwise, it will lose all its wetland uh, ecological value. So what the field staff are doing is actively managing the site. Some of our field staff also in charge of uh, managing the water level in the gateway so that suitable water depth is uh, managed for different types of birds. Despite the hard work WWF Hong Kong is doing at Maipo, there are also serious threats Maipo is facing. The aging of wetland is one of the main threats. 
Each year we put a lot of resources try to keep my pole as a wetland rather than turning dry. And now, because of the impact of climate change, the aging of the wetland is accelerating, so we have to act quicker to stop these threats. Uh, the climate change might also be impacting the migration pattern of migratory water birds. So eventually there might be some birds which might not visit my pole anymore, so we can't predict these, these changes. Also pollution and housing development are around the site. Because uh, my pole water system is connected to deep bay, so the pollution outside will be harmful to the site as well. So WWF Hong Kong will continue to conserve Maipo Nature Reserve and do the habitat management work here to hopefully help us maintain the beautiful environment for our next generation. But we also need your support, no matter it's time or your donation to WWF Hong Kong because uh, there's nowhere else like Maipo in Hong Kong you can find so many birds, such a natural environment which our future generations should also be enjoying.